Hi, my name's Clinton. And I'm Chris. Today we're here to introduce a new product from Bosch, the OBD 1110 Diagnostic Scan Tool. We also want to talk a little bit about diagnostics in general um, and the application of this scan tool on vehicle. Um, Chris, let's just start off with talking a bit about onboard diagnostics. Yeah, so OBD or onboard diagnostics or OBD2 is a vehicle standard that's in all the vehicles for diagnostics, as in to look for faults in the vehicle. So if something goes wrong in the engine part of your car, you'll get a light or a warning on the dash that inform it could be a check engine light that actually says check engine or a little orange picture of an engine or it might come up on your multifunction display and if that warning comes up it also means that the computer has some information stored inside it which is what we access or read with the tool. Yeah. So from vehicles um, manufactured after 2006 uh, we're pretty safe that they've all got the capability yeah, to because these everything products. from we were you know we Australia adopted it in 2006 a lot of the earlier other countries that we get vehicles from like Japan or Europe or America they adopted it before that so pretty much our local Australian cars from 2006 onwards, but everything in the country has to meet it from then, so pretty safe. So this particular scan tool has the capacity to read vehicles post-2006. Yep. Um, there are obviously models that were produced before that that may have had the capacity. Um, we've got a vehicle list uh, available on our website that yep. will allow customers to look through and, uh, and identify if their particular car falls into that bracket before yep. 2006. Yes, so you can scan, there's a, there's a barcode on the back, a QR code that you scan, takes you to the list on the website so you can have a look at that. Mm. And all of those vehicles on that list have been tested so we know it actually works. Great. Um, in regards to the codes that we can read and, and we're starting to get into what this particular scan tool will help us with, um, in some cases this particular scan tool may come up with an unknown code. Yes, that could be because it's a manufacturer specific code which a tool can read and it will give you the code number but it might not have a description for the code because it's only related to that manufacturer. Okay. Well, I think we better get a car in and start putting this on it. Uh, is there any pre-checks or anything that we need to be aware of before using this on a car? Just the normal things you would check when you're working on the car. Make sure that you have enough area, it's clean. Make sure your car's obviously in park or in neutral if it's a manual, you know, handbrakes on, all the normal type of stuff. So. And, and this particular scan tool is essentially going to read data. It's not going to try and rewrite or... No, the, the, it, it only reads information out. The only time that it actually asks the car to do something is when, if you ask it to clear the codes that are in the car. Right. But again, you're not going to damage anything, you're only going to clear some information. Okay, well I guess we'll get into clearing codes a little bit later, but let's get a, get a car in here and um, put the tool on it. Alright Chris, so you mentioned um, some of the pre-precautions before starting work on the car. Yep. So just the standard things you would do, even if you were vacuuming or washing your car, you know, make sure the manual's in neutral, make sure if it's an automatic it's in park, handbrakes on, things like that. So. Okay. Alright, well we're ready to go with the vehicle. Um, this is the uh, scan tool out of its packaging. Uh, it's all one piece, so there's nothing to lose. Um, there are no batteries, at this stage it doesn't power on. Uh, it gets its power from the, the vehicle when we plug it in? It gets its power from the diagnostic connector on the vehicle, yes. So we better find this um, diagnostic port? Yeah, so for the diagnostic port, for all OBD2 compliant vehicles, which is for Australia from 2006 onwards. Um, the diagnostic connector must be either side of the steering wheel or underneath the steering wheel. So th the standard actually says 30 centimetres either side of the steering wheel, within 30 centimetres. So pretty much any vehicle after 2006 will find it somewhere? We'll find it somewhere either around the steering wheel or underneath the covers down here. Okay. Uh, if we can't find it? Uh, if it's not there on an earlier vehicle, or if you can't find it, sometimes if you, it's referred to in the owner's manual, so you can look at the owner's manual and find it. So Chris, this is a, a 2015 model Ford Territory. Yep. Where have you found the OBD? So on this one, it's actually under the cover. So you just pull that cover off. And then the diagnostic port's right there. So you just plug it in. And do you need to start the vehicle or? Uh, it will power up straight away as soon as you plug it in, but it won't be able to read any information until you actually turn the ignition on. Okay, so we just turn the car over to the accessories? Uh, to ignition on. Oh, yeah, ignition to on all the yep. way through. And now it's already reading or scanning. Alright Chris, so the scan tool's read the codes in the system? Yeah, it has. So it's brought up the fault codes and if we press enter we can actually see the first fault code that's brought up. So it's a P0100 code which is related to MS airflow. So that's relating to how much air is actually going into the engine when the engine's working. Um, and it's coming up as a confirmed code. Is there a difference between a confirmed code and another type of code? Well, 
all codes, when the computer first sees a fault, it will bring it up as a pending code, and then once it sees the fault again, it can confirm that there's something wrong, it will bring up a confirm code, and actually turn your light on, your check engine light. So this code's essentially saying, yeah, there's a component in the, in the vehicle that uh, we're confident is either failing right. or, or reporting an yeah. error. And then the other code that we've got is an intake air temperature system code. So it's saying there's something wrong with an intake air temperature sensor that measures the temperature of the air going into the engine. Okay. So it, it, at the moment, it should just be reading ambient air temp or room temperature because we're not really running the engine. Right. I guess once we've got this code data and it's giving us an indication of faults, the next feature of the tool is live data. Yep, so that we can go back to the main menu and in the main menu we can see we have read codes, erase codes, um, we have view data and we have view freeze frame, they're the main things you would go into. Um, so what you could do, you could go into view freeze frame data. What freeze frame data is, that, that is when the code was actually stored, it, the computer also stores some conditional data or some information about the engine. So it's telling us what the code is, it's telling us what the coolant temperature sensor, what the temperature was for the engine temperature, uh, it's telling us how fast the engine was running, whether the vehicle was driving, like kilometres an hour of the vehicle. So it actually just has some information about what was going on with the vehicle at the time the code was stored. I guess that's a big part about using a, a scan tool. The DTC code itself is one component to the puzzle, but this extra information is what you use to round out the real Well, that's right. The freeze frame, data, freeze frame data can be useful if you aren't sure what the fault is, mm -hmm. and you can clear the fault codes, and you can clear, erase the codes, and erase the freeze frame data. But if you take a note of it, then the next time the code's logged, you can look at it again, look at it again. And if, you know, for instance, you might find that this code's always logged when we're driving at 50 kilometres an hour. Right. So that will then help you find out what's going on. So if I've got that freeze frame data, it's, it's given me an idea of when the code was actually faulted. Um, you also mentioned live data. Yep, so then we can actually go, so that was just stored when the code was logged. We can go into that information now and actually look at the information coming off that sensor or off all the sensors live at the moment. Live on the car. So if we went down, so, so one of our codes was for intake air temperature sensor or the temperature of the air going into the engine. Mm -hmm. So if I go down and look at that live now, it's telling me that intake air temperature sensor is minus 40 degrees. Right. Now we know that it's, it's not. not minus 40 degrees, so there's definitely something wrong with that information. Do you need to start the car to read this live data? Um, it depends on the sensor and the information. So something like that air temperature sensor you don't because it's reading now. Yep. Uh, but if we wanted to say read the mass airflow sensor, which is t reads how much air is getting sucked into the engine, well the engine obviously needs to be running. So if I started that now, um, it's actually telling us that the mass airflow is zero. Now we know it's not zero because the engine's running, so there's definitely air going into the engine, but it's reading zero, so there's definitely something, something wrong, wrong there. With that. So with the vehicle started, it's going to bring up a, an array of, of sensors that are feeding information. We can start to look at that data and decide, does it make sense? That's right. So, and then once you're happy with that information, so your freeze frame data, uh, you've read your code, you know what the code is, you might have written that down, you know what it is, then you can actually go up and erase code, so it will clear all that information. So we've gone and attempted the repair, we've maybe put a new component in the vehicle, yep. it's time to clear the code and see if it's fixed it. That's right, so if the code's fixed it will go away, uh -huh. uh, if the fault's still there, or if the problem is still there, then the code itself might not even erase, it might just keep coming back because the fault is still in the vehicle. Right. So normally to clear the codes, we would use the main menu? Yep, so you go back to the main menu, just scroll up to erase codes, you just press enter and it will just clear the and codes. And it's just going to clear and them And then it will just clear them. Turn the vehicle off, turn it on again, and if there's new codes... You can do that, you can turn the vehicle on once or twice, or go for a little drive and come back and yep. see if your light comes back on, or read it again. Yep. Yeah. And any new codes will be logged back in the system? That's right, yes. Okay. So Chris, we've used the tool to read the codes out, check out some live data and, and even capture that freeze frame data. There's quite a few menu items there. Maybe let's tell everyone what each one does. Okay, so the main thing on the menu is our IM monitors. So a monitor is pretty much the preset test that's in the computer of the car that runs in order to test all the components we're talking about and find faults in the vehicle. Um, so most of the time, though, a lot of those tests would need you to be driving the vehicle. So yeah. that's why the faults appear when we're driving the vehicle, if you like. So. So that gives us an idea of what the car... Yeah, so what it will do, for different vehicles we get different ones. So for this it's pretty much giving us, if you see an NA, not applicable, so that's not on this vehicle. OK are the ones that are completed on this vehicle. If one of these monitors wasn't complete, it wouldn't say OK, it would have INC on it for incomplete. And that just means you need to drive more to... It needs more it. drive time. That's right. right. 
Um, so then we've got read codes, so that's where our main menu where we were before. And of course, the, the tool actually jumps straight into reading codes. Yeah, when we first plugged it in, that's where it went to because that's what most people want to do straight yeah, off yeah. is read the code. So this is giving us our P0100 code or our EMAS code and our P0113 code, which was our intake air temperature yeah, sensor code. What we saw earlier. That's right. Then we've obviously got a race code. So when you go into that, it gives you another screen. It says, are you sure you want to raise it? So just to confirm, because you don't want to raise the code if you don't really want to. Yeah, of course. Um, so then we go back out of that, then we've got mill status. So mill status is just the same indicator as what we see on the instrument cluster. So that's just telling us whether that light is on or off. So that's pretty much all that is. So just in case there's a false alarm regarding that, that lamp, this is a way of double checking that it's functional. Uh, yeah, that's right. So you might have an instance where that light, the car might be driving bad and the light might not come on because there's something wrong with the lamp on mm. the vehicle, but this will show you that the lamp is actually on as far as the computer's concerned. It's, it's that's concerned, right. yeah. Um, so view data is our view our live data, so yep. that's where you were before. So that's where, you know, this particular vehicle's got 329 different things you can view. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things, you know, you can scroll through and view all the different things like engine speed and engine temperature and all the rest of it. Um, something that's probably relevant to what we were just doing is the, um, the intake air temperature. So we can see that intake air temp on this one is minus 40 degrees. And we know that we're definitely not, not at right. 40, minus 40 degrees today. So, um, And then view freeze frame data. So that's the one we looked at before. So the freeze frame data is just some conditions the computer stored at the time the code was actually logged okay. when it stored the code. That's right. So it's telling us what, what was actually happening with the vehicle, whether you were driving, whether you were stationary, how hot, how cold it was when the code got stored. Um, so you scroll down, you've got VIN number. So our VIN number is our vehicle identification number. So every vehicle's got their unique VIN, um, and this just will display it. So that should, the, computer, the VIN in the computer should match should the computer match the on the vehicle, vehicle. that's yeah. right. Um, and then system setup is pretty straightforward. It's like most things, mm. you set up your, whether you want metric or imperial measurement, you can set up, you can change your screen brightness a little bit. Um, you can do a test on the screen or the buttons if you like, just some setup stuff. Yeah, just unique to the tool. That's right. So Chris, now that we've done everything and, and we've, we've used it for uh, diagnosing this particular vehicle, to turn it off? Um, to turn it off, you pretty much don't do anything. You just unplug it. You know, you can turn the ignition off first if you like, and then just unplug the tool and you're done. And Chris, I'm sure some people get concerned, um, but can you damage the tool or damage the vehicle by unplugging it in the um, wrong order? No, you can't do that. Okay. So, yeah. So preferably the vehicle's turned off before you um, start and obviously you turn it off again when you're ready to unplug it. But you're not going to hurt anything it. if it happens no. to fall out. That's right. Okay. All right, well thanks Chris. I think that's um, pretty much covered the, the use of the tool on this particular car. Cool. All right, Chris. So we've pretty much used the uh, scan tool to investigate this uh, vehicle. I guess the uh, key functions are code reading. Yeah, so code reading is the main thing people use it for, but we've got live data, freeze frame data, and you can read your monitors if you need to do that. So, so a good little DIY scan tool. Absolutely. So it's the Bosch OBD 1110. Um, we hope this information was useful for you, and thanks for your time today.